Let's talk about this song, how the bass line changed, and how a Spectre bass helped define the sound of one of David Bowie's biggest hits. Uh, uh, all right, uh, the year was 1982. David Bowie and Nile Rodgers had become fast friends, bonding over their shared musical interests. Bowie invited Nile to Switzerland, where he was working on a new album. Uh, he actually walked into my bedroom one morning with a 12-string guitar, yeah. and he said, uh, no, darling, um, I think this record's a hit. And he starts playing this song, and I thought to myself, wow, David, uh, if I do a song called Let's Dance and it sounds like a folk song, I'd have to turn in my Black Music Union card. So let me, <laughs> let me take that and work on an arrangement. Niall worked his magic, and on December 19th and 20th, 1982, they recorded a funkier demo version of the acoustic folk song Bowie started with. But the bass line wasn't what we know this classic song to be. Let's take a look at the original demo bass line and hear the difference. This version is better, but they're trying to make a hit, remember? So they kept tweaking it. Niall simplified the guitar part, adding delay, and the bass line became a much more active and interesting line, played by bassist Carmine Rojas and his Spectre bass. Let's see how the final version of the bass line compares to the demo. Uh, yeah, and they had a hit on their hands. Let's Dance was one of Bowie's fastest selling songs, becoming his first and only single to top the US and UK charts and introducing Bowie to a new generation of fans. This goes to show you the power of a good bass line. 